Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, blue liquor shields, death slayers, peasants, vassals, minions, executioners, guys who wear hoods. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today I want to talk about Saudi Arabia. Actually, a couple other countries too, but uh, it's this uh, story that came out that uh, talks about a surge in beheadings in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I was thinking about this topic anyway because of all this uh, controversy about ISIS using this technique of uh, beheading and these mass executions. I don't want to take anything away from the uh, utter bloodthirsty brutality of ISIS. Uh, certainly the, the fact that they uh, photograph and film these executions and these beheadings and then uh, post them uh, adds to their uh, notoriety. But uh, it turns out actually a lot of the executions that are done in Saudi Arabia are also uh, published in uh, YouTube videos and are actually carried out in public so anybody can and film them I, I assume but uh, let's get down to some of these details and um, well actually before I do that let me point out that uh, like I say it is relative uh, when we talk about the uh, bloodthirsty uh, nature of ISIS um, certainly they have uh, 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 photographed and filmed some pretty gruesome events and a lot of uh, uh, executions on a large scale. But uh, we also have these other events in the world and, and it's, uh, there's some nuances that make it uh, uh, tenuous at best to connect these sort of uh, acts of brutality. But at the same time, um, it's, it's relative. Uh, for example, the, the uh, four countries that execute most people are China is number one. We don't have a number for how many they execute. Uh, number two is Iran. Number three is Saudi Arabia. And number four is Iraq. And then in Iraq is the number four center for executions. And that's besides uh, what's going on with ISIS in the field. And um, it turns out Iraq is one of the uh, world leaders in execution. And I did a video on this. Uh, they've been doing uh, mass hangings. And um, they're also known for uh, beheadings. And, and let's remember that during the American occupation all those years, there was plenty of uh, filmed um, acts of uh, beheading and other sorts of executions. So it's, it's really nothing new. Uh, it's just this, this time it's being used uh, for propaganda purposes. Um, and, uh, and it's uh, fairly isolated uh, in the, the arena of current beheadings that we see in mass media. Um, but anyway, back to Iraq, they uh, executed, 20, in 2012, they executed 123, and sometimes in batches of up to 50 uh, people hung at one time. Uh, in 2013, they uh, hung 167 people. So, so Iraq was a, a center of executions anyway. And uh, certainly could, one can make the distinction between uh, so-called uh, judicial uh, decided uh, executions where theoretically somebody got a trial in Iraq before they were executed and, and the people in, in Saudi Arabia uh, were given some sort of trial before they were executed. So uh, certainly that is another distinction between this uh, judge, jury, and executioner uh, and this arbitrary reasons for uh, being uh, beheaded or executed in the field by ISIS. Um, and, and we can bring up, like I've, I've talked about before, we can have the United States being so uh, shocked and appalled by these beheadings and these mass executions by ISIS, but certainly United States policy uh, with these drones and these airstrikes uh, end up with the same results. Uh, if you look at a field of, of uh, 20 bodies who are decimated by a helicopter attack or a Hellfire missile, I'm sure it's going to be uh, somewhere comparable to a field with 20 uh, people on it that were either by, beheaded or uh, shot. So, uh, so let's keep that in mind. And uh, but let's, let's get on to Saudi Arabia because, you know, here's a, a, a supposedly an ally of the United States and uh, we, the United States never wants to talk about or discuss the kind of behavior we see in Saudi Arabia. And uh, we also have Israel is not very critical of uh, the, the practices of Saudi Arabia and interestingly enough we have uh, the United States involved in the Middle East battling all of these militants who want to establish Sharia law and uh, Sharia law is alive and thriving in Saudi Arabia and the worst uh, brand of it Wahhabism 
and uh, and these executions are done in public. And uh, this latest article is about uh, a surge in uh, in uh, beheadings in Saudi Arabia. They're going going to have uh, night. Uh, 19 beheadings in 17 days, uh, nearly one a day for a month uh, in August, and uh, 11 of them are for nonviolent crimes. One of them is actually for witchcraft. So somebody's getting their head cut off in Saudi Arabia for perpetrating uh, witchcraft. But the the point is that this is actually nothing new. The fact that it's in the news again is is only relative to the uh, events with ISIS because in May 2013 there was another a report from Am in Amnesty International. It was also talking about a disturbing surge in beheadings in Saudi Arabia. And uh, I was able to get some, some figures. Between 1985 and 2007, there was 1,695 beheadings, public executions. Um, 2007 to 2010, there was another 345. 2011, there was 26. In 2013, there was all, over 100. Um, so we have a, a fair amount of uh, beheadings going on in uh, Saudi Arabia, upwards of 2,500 or so in the last uh, 20 plus years, uh, 30 years. And um, in uh, 19, between 1981 and 1992, there's also four public stonings. And, uh, and uh, to give you a, a snapshot of who these people are that are getting executed, uh, interestingly enough, uh, four brothers were uh, executed all four brothers for uh, smuggling some pot into Saudi Arabia and that was this year in 2010 we had 27 migrant workers were uh, beheaded and slain and we have 45 foreign maids on death row it's hard for me to believe that uh, 45 uh, foreign maids would be involved in uh, capital crimes it seems more like a system of retribution and in fact uh, there is a little retribution because if you look at the list of uh, crimes that you can be beheaded for, beheaded uh, for in Saudi Arabia, it's pretty surprising. It starts off pretty good uh, with murder and rape, but uh, then uh, goes on to encompass everything from false prophecy to blasphemy to armed robbery to drug use, adultery, witchcraft, sorcery, terrorism, treason, burglary, carjacking, drug smuggling, home invasion, idolatry sedition and sexual misconduct. Uh, so you can pretty much be beheaded for just about anything. And, um, like I say, this is done in a public square and um, everybody gets to watch. And not only that, another thing about ISIS uh, gets singled out uh, by their use of crucifixion, but apparently that's a regular uh, part of the Saudi Arabian uh, ritual beheading and then uh, crucifixion of the, uh, the beheaded body. Um, with its body sitting next to it, and then it's displayed for four to six days. Although apparently, uh, if you commit a crime and uh, the family is willing to uh, take a, a gigantic bribe, uh, one, there's one report of a bribe up to $11 million that was paid, then the, the family can decide to spare you. So uh, a great uh, harsh system. You can be beheaded for uh, the simplest of crimes, but uh, of course you can buy your way out of it. So. Uh, Great system, great moral system, a great uh, uh, ally that the United States has. And, and we can talk all about the brutality of ISIS uh, while uh, uh, we work side by side uh, with a country like Saudi Arabia. So many things about this country that just do not gel with uh, what I consider American values. So, uh, so good question to ask. Who is better at beheading, ISIS or Saudi Arabia? I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?